Hello friends, today in this video I am going to discuss about a microbiology lab and the whole instruments and equipments which are used in a microbiology lab. So at first we will show you a scenario about the whole microbiology lab and then we will explain all the instruments uh, one by one about the all the instruments which are used in a microbiology lab. So the first step, first thing we will discuss about the whole scenario or a microbiological tour to a microbiological lab. Okay, so first this is the whole microbiological lab that is a whole uh, work which are done in a microbiology lab. So first is the media preparation. So first step is the first step is the media preparation which is done in microbiology lab. So any microbiological analysis. So first is the uh, ready-made media which are uh, which we can get in market. So we will take the particular ready-made media for particular uh, for growing of the particular microorganisms and then we will measure or anal uh, or analyze or uh, weighing that media in a weighing machine and after that after uh, weighing the particular quantity of the ready-made media then we will pour it in a measuring cylinder or conical flask or beaker and after that in the beaker where we take the ready-made media we will add the particular amount of distilled water or double distilled water or deionized water we will mix this deionized water or distilled water to our particular media okay or a particular uh, <coughs> amount of media and then we will mix and we will prepare the media okay so there uh, this is uh, ready for our uh, this is uh, our media is prepared for next step so the next step is media sterilization so how we will done the media sterilization so media sterilization is done by autoclave so by through this autoclave we will sterilize our media so no uh, no microorganisms are contaminated or no microorganisms are present in our media so media is uh, totally sterilized for testing or uh, for next step so after media sterilization we will go to the inoculation steps so here in inoculation so for inoculation we use a uh, equipment or instrument that is laminar airflow which provide us the sterile environment where we perform our testing or analysis of microbiological organisms okay so after inoculation so where we inoculate our uh, culture or microorganisms so we inoculate our culture or microorganisms into our media which we have sterilized in this step okay so after sterilization we inoculate our microorganisms in the inoculation step and then we uh, incubate our uh, inoculated media into the incubator so in incubator particular temperature and particular time is maintained in the incubator for incubation of the microorganisms suppose uh, for some bacteria 37 degrees celsius for 24 hour is required or some uh, different types of microorganisms for their growth they required uh, 42 degrees celsius or 25 degrees celsius temperature for 24 hour or 48 hour or 72 hour so different types of microorganisms require different types of incubation condition for their particular growth okay so after incubation or after growth then we will see the observation or uh, the microorganisms whether they uh, grow on our particular media or not so after so here we will in the petri plate we will see the colonies appeared after incubation so we will count these colonies in colony counter and after counting colony counter or after using colony counter we can uh, observe the result and if we want to measure the or if we want to see the uh, morphology of the microorganisms then we will use microscope and uh, we can capture the data in our computer okay so this is the whole process so first step is the media preparation next step is the uh, uh, media sterilization and third step is inoculation fourth step is incubation and the fifth step is observation so this is the whole step of a microbiological lab for microbiological analysis okay so now we will discuss all the equipments or instruments which are used in a microbiology lab one by one so the first and most common equipment which is used in a microbiology lab is 
autoclave. So this is the autoclave which we will use in our microbiology lab. So this is the orthodox or uh, conventional <coughs> autoclave which we used in our microbiology lab. So basically my autoclaves are two types. That is the vertical autoclave or that is a uh, horizontal autoclave. So this is the this is the vertical autoclave. So here uh, uh, it is called uh, vertical autoclave because the media for sterilization, the media which we want to sterilize, we add those media in vertical position. That means there the entry point is vertical. Okay. So if their uh, entry point is horizontal, then this type of autoclave is known as the horizontal autoclave. Okay. So based on their uh, orientation so we can say vertical autoclave or horizontal autoclave so here a, in this regions uh, the water is present here the water is present and here the bucket or chamber is present where we uh, pour our media or conical flask or any other things which we want to sterilize so sterilization is done in this position or sterilizing media is poured in this section and when we uh, and uh, then we add this cover or add this uh, cover close this cover and then we switch on the machine and after that uh, this is a steam sterilizer so the water will generate a steam and then when the steam uh, come or increase to 100 degree celsius after that after reaching the 100, 100 degree celsius then we will close the knob here we can see the close the knob of the steam so after uh, closing the knob of steam then the pressure will be increased to 15 lbps up to 15 lbps then uh, for 121 degree celsius so after it reach 121 degree celsius then uh, <coughs> uh, we will wait for reaching the 15 lbps pressure for 15 minutes so after that uh, the autoclave autoclaving is done so then when the temperature will be uh, coming to the 50 degree or 45 degree celsius then we will open the lid and come out all and uh, <coughs> come uh, all this media after sterilization and then we will use for inoculation so here another type of uh, autoclave here use that is the automatic autoclave so here we just have to add our media here and then we uh, then this uh, equipment done all the things automatically so this is the automatic autoclave which is the recent time autoclave okay and also there is a mini autoclave suppose you need to uh, sterilize very small amount of media so you can use this mini autoclave okay so different types of autoclaves are there for different purpose okay so next step is our next equipment is hot air oven so hot air oven is also used for sterilization of glasswares so glasswares which are used in uh, media preparation that uh, sterilized by hot air oven so hot air oven is basically performed uh, in 30 degrees mainly uh, mostly 30 degrees celsius to 300 degrees celsius in this temperature range a hot air oven is run so here you can see so here you can see this this temperature is the your uh, required temperature or the temperature present here and this the lower side it uh, show the temperature what you want or you uh, <coughs> determine or you want this temperature suppose you uh, want the uh, temperature uh, 80 degrees celsius and it show the uh, 40 degrees celsius so the temperature of the machine now is 40 degrees celsius and heater is on so after some times the heater will uh, increase the temperature of the chamber and it will show the 80 degree celsius which is our required temperature okay so in this way hot air oven is used for sterilization of glasswares so the next equipment which is used in microbiological lab that is incubator so incubator is used so after sterilization of the media then 
we use uh, we use inoculation so we inoculate our particular microorganisms into our media and after that for their growth for the growth of microorganisms we inoculate those media into the incubator so after sterilization we inoculate after sterilization we inoculate the microorganisms and then we incorporate or uh, pour them into the incubator so for uh, in incubator it is <coughs> present for uh, one day or two day 24 hour or 48 hour for 37 degrees celsius or 25 degrees celsius as per the requirement so after that we will see the observation in our media okay so this is the <coughs> chamber for growth of microorganisms okay so next equipment used in microbiology lab that is colony counter so this is the colony counter so uh, after observation uh, after getting the microbial colonies here this is the petri plate this is the petri plate where we will see the colonies are present here these are the colonies of microbes or bacteria so we want to measure or we want to count these colonies so at first we have to pour this petri plate into this position and here a quadrant is present so we can uh, count so here a magnifying glass is present and one pen is given uh, with this equipment okay or instrument so uh, we will observe the microorganisms or petri plate from this direction uh, through this mic uh, through this magnifying glass and we will see all the colonies so each uh, with this pen we have to mark or press all the colonies one by one so all the colonies we, we press here so uh, the count will be uh, shown here in the digitally so after counting all the colonies we will see what are the uh, count of these uh, colonies are present in our petri plate okay so in this way colony counter is performed for colony counting so next equipment which we used in microbiological lab that is weighing balance so weighing balance is used for weighing the weighing the microbial media okay so ready-made media which are present in powdered form we have to add in our in this weighing balance and then the particular quantity of media is uh, weighed by this uh, weighing balance and then we have to pour it into our distilled water into the conical or in our test tube okay so this is the process for weighing balance which is very much required uh, equipment in the microbiological lab so uh, based on the purpose of the weighing balance weighing balance are different types suppose uh, we want to analyze we and want to analyze or measure very minute amount of any uh, uh, media so for that reason we have to use a closed chamber of closed chamber of weighing balance so where all the side is closed with a glass so we have to slide this uh, portion and we have to add the required amount of media here in this portion and after that we have to close it and then we have to measure uh, here we can see the amount of we can see the amount of uh, media we uh, have added so after uh, that so uh, in this way we can measure the quantity of uh, <coughs> media by this weighing balance okay so after that so the next equipment which we used in microbiology lab is distilled water unit or distillation unit so water distillation unit is used to produce the distilled water so here this is this equipment is a double distillation unit so here basically how it performs so basically distilled water is used for media preparation okay so for media preparation normal water is not used because the TDS or total dissolved solid or iron different type of types of elements are there in the normal water so that's why we have to distill the water so be basically the <clears throat> any type of 
elements are reduced only the h2o is present in that distilled water so basically distillation is done by uh, at first we have to add the tap water this is the tap so we have to add the tap water so tap water is going to the ro system so here also we use the ro system so ro system here the ro filter is present so the water the tap water passed through this ro filter so ro filter uh, uses uh, or reduces the tds or total dissolved solid and the output output of this ro system or water go to the distillation unit so here the distillation distilled water or here the uh, ro water comes to the distillation chamber so here the first first time the water distilled here so here the vapored water go out upside and here second time the water is distilled and then the vapor go upside and go to this in this way to the bucket where the collection uh, distilled water is collected okay so in this way water distillation is done so water distillation is done to reduce the total dissolved solid or any other elements which are present in the water okay so the next equipment is hot plate hot plate is basically used for those media which we cannot um, autoclave because many uh, <clears throat> elements which are present in a media that cannot be autoclavable so that uh, that type of media is uh, that type of media is sterilized by this hot plate method so here hot plate in hot plate the uh, the media is just uh, going for the uh, <clears throat> heat to boil so this is suppose this is the media so this is the media so this media is heat to boil to 100 degrees celsius then we have used it as a uh, media for inoculation with the microorganisms so this for this use hot plate is used in microbiology lab and next equipment which we use that is ph meter so ph meter is required to determine the um, ph of the media which we used for microbial growth so here also we use the ph meter uh, ph paper so ph paper gives a uh, approx ph of the media but ph meter ph meter gives the uh, exact exact ph of the media so in ph meter suppose uh, this ph meter uh, this ph paper in ph paper suppose uh, one drop one drop of media is added to this ph paper and it gives a red color so if it gives a red color then we will see uh, we match the color with our ph paper and we will see the red color is 2 so ph is 2 so it is approx its uh, approx ph is 2 so if we want to get a particular or exact ph of the media then we will go for ph meter so this is the sensor so we have to input or enter the uh, sensor into our media and we will <coughs> and the sensor will collect the ph of the media and we will show it show digitally here so if we want to increase the ph of the media then we have to add the noh that is the base or if you want to decrease the ph that is we have to add the uh, hcl or acid into the media so that's why in this way we can increase or decrease the uh, p uh, increase or decrease the ph of the media okay so in this way the ph of the media is measured by ph meter and the next equipment is hot water bath so hot water bath is mainly operated a operated in temperature range of 30 degree celsius to 100 degree celsius it is operated in between 100 degree celsius okay so suppose uh, our agar media is uh, we have to Uh, suppose a solution is given which uh, told that uh, we have to keep it at 75 degree celsius for 15 minutes okay so we have to add our conical flask or media or solution into the water bath and we have to uh, add this lid close this uh, compartment with the lid 
for 15 minutes in 75 degrees Celsius and then we will use for next step. So for that type of uh, analysis, we use this hot water bath. Basically here a heater is water heater is present and water is added a certain quantity here. Okay. And in contact with the water, our, our, <coughs> our media or conical flask is placed here. Okay. In contact with the water. Okay. So the next equipment used in microbiology that is centrifuge machine or which is used for centrifugation. So centrifugation is used to separate the components which are present in a solution. So suppose this is a solution. This is a solution where we want to separate uh, some components from another. So we have to centrifuge this. So at first we have to pour it into the Eppendorf or Falcon tube and then we have to pour it into the centrifuge machine and then we will set the RPM that is rotation per minute. So we have to set a particular RPM and particular minute. So for what minute, uh, what time it will uh, centrifuge. So after centrifugation, then we will see uh, Eppendorf showing a pellet here. A pellet will be present and a supernatant is there. So if our required required uh, thing is supernatant then we will take the supernatant and remove the pellet and if our required thing is pellet then we will uh, remove the supernatant and take this pellet okay so in this way we will use in our molecular biology in our microbiology so the next equipment which we use that is vortex mixture vortex mixture is used to mix a component suppose suppose we have uh, <clears throat> prepared a media prepared a media uh, by adding the distilled water with the ready-made media and then we have to mix this media so for mixing we have to add it or add this falcon tube or test tube into the vortex machine so vortex mixture we will shake the media in this way and it will mix the whole total media okay so uh, the main difference in principle of centrifuge machine and vortex is the centrifuge will go or uh, work in this way or rotate in this this way and uh, vortex machine rotate or uh, shake in this way this way okay so this is the main principle of centrifuge machine and vortex mixture okay so it is used for mixing of components and centrifuge machine is used for separation okay so the next equipment is laminar airflow so laminar airflow is used to <clears throat> get a sterile environment and in those sterile environment the uh, testing or any analyzing, analyzing analysis of microorganisms is done inside those sterile environment under the my, laminar airflow. So in laminar airflow, a HEPA filter is present. This is a HEPA filter. A HEPA filter is present. So the air which will pass through this HEPA filter, the microorganisms which are present in air will be trapped in the HEPA filter and then the <coughs> air will be air will out in this chamber which will be sterile uh, air so the micro uh, so the work we will done here will be uh, given a sterile environment so no contamination will be there in this environment so microorganisms can be analyzed <coughs> perfectly okay so to give a sterile environment we use laminar airflow and next equipment equipment is biosafety cabinet biosafety cabinet and laminar airflow is same but one thing is different that is biosafety cabinet is used for pathogenic microorganisms suppose you are working with a pathogenic microorganisms that time you have to work in biosafety cabinet because the in laminar airflow in laminar airflow the air which will go in this way after uh, passing through the uh, hepa filter then it the air comes in in this direction in outward direction in this direction the air comes 
so if we work with the pathogenic microorganisms it will be high chance that the microbiologist who work in the laminar airflow can be affected or infected by the pathogenic microorganisms okay so that's why biosafety cabinet is used so in biosafety cabinets the air which will go in this direction go and here the sterile environment is present and the air come outside so the uh, used air is go through the HEPA filter so basically HEPA filter is there here in in this position so the uh, air comes in this direction and after that it go outside and to the uh, outer room through and uh, here a heater is present so the uh, air comes through this air to the uh, exhaust to the outer side of the room okay so in this way biosafety works so no uh, bi microbiologist or biologist is affected by the pathogenic microorganism so uh, for that's why it is known as the biosafety so for the safety bias for the safety from the pathogens we use biosafety cabinets okay next equipment is shaker incubator shaker incubator is used for those microorganisms which require incubation with shaker with shaking condition so that's why uh, <clears throat> any type of uh, media uh, suppose this is a media where we inoculate our microorganisms and these microorganisms require shaking condition for their growth in a particular temperature so that's why we have to take this uh, inoculated media into our shaker incubator here and this is the particular uh, media inoculated media and we have to set suppose in 37 degrees celsius we have to set this set the temperature of the incubator in shaking condition so after overnight or after uh, uh, particular uh, <coughs> particular time we will see the growth of the microorganisms in shaker incubator so this is one type of incubator so after that now we will see the next equipment that is microscope so we all know microscope is very much related to the microbiology to see the microorganisms okay so this is the slide we have prepared and here the microorganisms are there suppose this is this would be gram uh, gram staining or acids acid first staining so suppose this is the slide preparation and now we have to take it and pour it or we have to hold it here uh, in the mechanical stage <clears throat> that is the uh, slide holder okay and in a microscope three types of lens uh, in a compound microscope three type of lens are there this is the these are the ocular lens that is the ocular lens or eyepiece by th this we can see the microorganisms by in this direction and here the objective lens are there these are the objective lens it could be uh, 10x or 40x or 100x so this objective lens <coughs> have to focus through the slide which we have given there and here another lens is there that is the condenser lens so condenser lens the work of the condenser lens the role of the condenser lens is to collect all the lights this is the light source all the light have to collect in this condenser and they have to condense all the light so that a particular resolution of the uh, of the picture we will get here through this uh, objective lens and we will see in the ocular lens okay so another uh, component that is the coarse adjustment and fine object adjustment is there to focus the picture of the microorganisms or slide okay so this is the microscope and here also we can see the uh, picture of the focused um, slide in our computer and we can capture the documents what we have seen okay so the next thing or next equipment is that is the micro pipette and glass pipette so glass pipette is previously used mostly but nowadays uh, micro pipette is used mostly because the glass pipette can be uh, <coughs> contaminated with the mouth or the person used okay so micro pipette here the micro pipette is used so micro pipette has a tip which I have to attach differently to the micro pipettes okay so 
the particular amount which we have set in uh, we we can set by uh, rotating the knob here present and set the particular amount which we want to take suppose we and in a <clears throat> in a micro pipette we can take the amount in microliter to uh, ml that means if we want to uh, take uh, 40 or 400 microliter then we can use different type of micro pipette and if we want to 10 ml or 5 ml of uh, quantity of liquid then you have to uh, require different type of micro pipette so different so uh, depending on the quantity of the amount of quantity of the measuring unit you have to use different type of micro pipettes so how we use this micro pipette so we have to hold it like this and this is the control button so we have to press it like this and here the micro pipette tips is there and if a solution bottle is solution is there then the micro pipette tip suppose here you can see here better so this is the solution is present so we have to pour it into the solution and then <coughs> press it and then we have to uh, slowly lose it so when we lose it then the uh, with the suction the water or the solution will come go upside whatever you have uh, set here in this position okay suppose you have to uh, take 100 ml sorry uh, we have to take uh, 100 microliter of water so we have set there 100 microliter then we pour it into the solution and it will take 100 microliter only and then we have to pour it into another container or another test tube or any other thing and after that after the after working is done then we have to eject this tip so we have to we don't have to uh, <coughs> touch this tip to remove from there so we have to use this tip ejector so here, here a tip ejector is there so we have to press it so the tip will be ejected automatically okay so this is the micro pipette and now we will go forward and the next equipment is turbidometer colorimeter and spectro spectrophotometer so these are used to measure the growth of the microorganisms in a solution for in turbidometer we measure the turbidity of the microorganisms which are present in a solution okay or in a colorimeter we see the color of the <coughs> color of the solution of microorganisms or in spectrophotometer also we measure the od value of the microorganisms whether a growth is present or not we can see by the od value that is optical density so in this way we can measure the growth of the microorganisms by this turbidometer calorimeter or spectrophotometer okay so the next equipment that is anaerobic gas jar anaerobic gas jar is used for anaerobic microorganisms to go grow the microorganisms which are pre which will grow in anaerobic condition for that microorganism we use this anaerobic gas jar so here at first suppose this is a petri plate where we want to grow the anaerobic microorganisms so anaerobic bacteria are inoculated here like this and then we have to pour it pour this uh, petri plate into the anaerobic gas jar and after that we have to add a gas mixture or gas pack where us uh, where some chemical compounds are there which produce which uh, automatically react with each other and produce the co2 gas when they produce CO2 gas, the whole chamber will be anaerobic. The whole chamber will show the anaerobic condition. And if whether the uh, whether the anaerobic condition is created in this gas jar or not, to measure or to determine, that's why we have to add an indicator. That indicator, this is indicator that is a methylene blue. So here normally it is a blue color in a uh, presence of oxygen so when the co2 is produced in the chamber that time it converted or in a anaerobic condition it convert the blue color into pink color so so it show a anaerobic condition is created in that gas chamber so in this way we can <coughs> grow the anaerobic microorganisms in the gas jar okay 
so this is the anaerobic gas jet so, so the next equipment is ultra low temperature diff freezer ultra low temperature laboratory diff freezer is used to preserve the microorganisms by preparing the glycerol stock so suppose this is a uh, this is the ampule or lyophilized culture of microorganisms which we have purchased from different culture collection collection units suppose in it from atcc or mtcc we have collected this collected this uh, ampule and then we revive these uh, microorganisms in our uh, <coughs> normal petri plate normal petri plate and normal particular broth and after that we have to <coughs> we have to uh, prepare our glycerol stock where we will add our microorganisms with the glycerol with particular amount of glycerol and then we produce uh, many many uh, <coughs> tubes of glycerol stock with microorganisms and then we will uh, pour it into our diff freezer okay and after uh, <coughs> and this in this uh, glycerol stock condition the microorganisms can be preserved for two to five years two to five years we can preserve these microorganisms for our daily use okay and the temperature of the laboratory diff freezer mainly uh, minus 40 degrees celsius or minus 80 degrees celsius is used for laboratory diff freezer mainly minus 80 degrees celsius is used for preserving to three to five years and in 40 degrees 40 minus 40 degrees celsius is used for mainly uh, one year or maximum two years okay for long preservation we use minus 40 degrees celsius laboratory diff freezer in glycerol stock okay so the next equipment is fumigator fumigator is used to <coughs> to sterilize the whole <coughs> room of a microbiology lab to sterilize the room in a microbiology lab we use fumigator so as a fumigating agent we use formaldehyde or potassium permanganate or peroxide silver so these fumigating agents are or fumigating agents or liquids are added in this bucket in this position and then we have to switch on and here a uh, <coughs> fan is there so the fumigating agents will go upward in this direction and through this fan the whole the <coughs> fumigating agent will be spreaded in the whole room like this and it will kill all the microbes which are present in that room so room sterilization is done by fumigator with the fumigating agents okay so to get a microbes free room okay so it can be done in a uh, once in a week or two times in a week okay so the next equipment is Bunsen burner. Bunsen burner is used for incinerating the inoculation loop. So inoculation loop have to. So inoculation loop which we uh, used for uh, inoculating the microorganisms, inoculating the microorganisms in a petri plate or in a uh, <coughs> test tube broth. So we have to incinerate it at first in a Bunsen burner in a red hot condition then we have to use it as a inoculating loop so to incinerate the inoculation loop or to kill the microorganisms which are present in an inoculation loop to sterilize the inoculation loop at first we have to take it into the Bunsen burner and in a Bunsen burner this is the blue flame this portion is the blue flame so upward in this in this position of the blue flame uh, upside of the blue flame the most or hottest region of the flame is there so this portion is the hottest flame this is the hottest flame hottest portion region of the flame so here we have to take the inoculation loop in this in there so that's uh, so that we can get the red hot condition of the inoculation loop like this here we can see this is the red hot condition of the inoculation loop to incinerate the inoculation loop for inoculation okay and different types of inoculation loops are there as per our purpose or requirement and this is the inoculation loop holder this is the inoculation loop so we have to add it there like this okay and then after <coughs> incinerating in Bunsen burner or flame 
then we have to use this to take the microbes or take one loop full of microbes from this solution and we have to add a new media to this solution to this solution a one loop full of microorganisms okay so this is the role of the inoculation loop to inoculate the microorganisms from one container or one uh, chamber to another next thing is the petri plate we all know about the petri plate which are used in microbiological lab so petri plate are used to prepare the media or solidifying media that is the agar media which are we have we have uh, prepared so the agar media is poured into the petri plate when the agar media is after sterilization when the agar media is 45 to 50 degrees celsius in temperature when they are uh, in uh, liquid condition we have to pour it into the petri plate and after the solid after the solidification of the agar media then we can see like this the agar media and after that we have to inoculate the microorganisms there okay and then we have to you know uh, incubate in the incubator and after that we can see the observation like these colonies okay so this is the petri plate this is the blood agar plate here we can see the red color petri plate that is the blood agar plate where the blood is added as a enriched media okay so the next equipment or instrument that is 70% ethanol. 70% ethanol is used in the microbiology lab or microbiological floor or microbiological workplace where we use, where we uh, take our uh, all the analysis here. The microbiological floors are cleaned by 70% ethanol. That is, that because the 70% ethanol is the most uh, <coughs> effective to kill the microorganisms which are present in our environment. Okay. So the next thing is spatula so spatula is used spatula is used to take the uh, microbial media that is uh, present in powdered form to measure the measure in the weighing balance so different types of spatula are used as per our requirement or as per our purpose okay so next thing is the glassware so different types of glassware are used as per our requirement that is the glass cylinder <coughs> glass measuring cylinder or conical flask or beakers are used for different purpose of the microbiological work next is test tube the most common part of the microbiological lab that is the test tube in every microbiological lab you can see test tube in the any other any lab okay so test tube have to cotton plug with the cotton because the outer environment we have to separate the outer environment from the inner environment of the media because uh, to uh, dominate or to uh, nullify the contamination from the outer environment because the air <coughs> in air many microorganisms are present so to differentiate the microorganisms from the air to the media to remove the contamination we have to cotton plug the test tube like this in this way we have to cotton plug the test tube so that the microorganisms can be sterilized by autoclave properly okay <coughs> so the next thing is ready-made media this is the last slide so ready-made media which we used nowadays for the <coughs> growth of the microorganisms okay so this is the food of the microorganisms the basic components which will be present that is the glucose peptone meat extract sodium chloride and also agar is used as a solidifying agent and distilled water is used so the powder this is present in the powder form and this powder from media is uh, measured in the weighing balance and then we have to add it into the conical and uh, after adding the particular amount of ready-made media and then we have to add the distilled water in mentioned uh, amount okay so suppose uh, here in this ready-made media this is mentioned that one in one liter of distilled water only 25 gram of media or 25 gram of powdered media have to add so suppose you have to make a 500 ml of media so in that time 12.5 12.5 gram of media you have to add in a 500 ml of distilled water so in this way you can make your media and after that we can go for the media sterilization 
okay so this is the whole equipment and instruments which are used in a microbiological lab so we can see the whole total scenario here once again that is here at first so so we have to prepare the media then we have to pre uh, sterilize the media by autoclaving and after that we have to inoculate the media in the laminar airflow or biosafety cabinet then we have to incubate them in the incubator for their growth and after that we have to observe the microorganisms uh, <coughs> by showing uh, by uh, uh, showing uh, by taking the results from colony counter okay and also we can see the morphology by microscope and also we can see the uh, uh, particular <coughs> role by uh, biochemical test of the microbial microorganisms okay so this is the whole scenario of the microbiological lab okay thank you for watching this video